Oh my god. Well, it looks like we finally made it to this. Hey guys, it's Saralum1 and once again, welcome to my Ultima Weapon Guide. Today's guide will teach you how to unlock the Ultima Weapon in Kingdom Hearts 3. And I'm gonna walk you through the process step by step and make it real easy to follow, like I always try to do. This guide will also double as a complete item synthesis guide since I'm gonna give you information on how to get every material in the game. Obviously the elephant in the room, I am the latest man in the universe with this guide, making it a year late. But I'm hoping maybe some of you procrastinators out there who haven't made this weapon yet and want to get ready for Remind find this video useful, or you guys just see the amount of work I've put into this and hopefully want to support the video anyway. Getting the Ultima Weapon in Kingdom Hearts 3 is similar to how it is in Kingdom Hearts 1 and 2, and by that I mean we have got to use item synthesis. The way synthesizing works in this game is you talk to a Moogle, go down to Workshop, and then you'll hand over any materials you have to the Moogle in order to update your collector's goals, and then you can select Synthesize Items. The thing is, you're only able to synthesize things that you have the recipe for, so the Ultima weapon may not be on this list yet. Unlocking recipes falls under the collector's goal section of the synthesis menu. And as you can see, you earn the Ultima Weapon recipe after collecting 58 different types of synthesis materials. This is something you build up over the course of your entire playthrough, and we're gonna consider this step one in getting the Ultima Weapon. Collect 58 different types of materials to unlock the Ultima recipe in the workshop. In general, you should be very close to having gotten 58 different types of materials after getting all the way to the end game. But if you don't have it, I'm not going to be able to tell which materials you're missing exactly through the screen, but you'll be able to figure out which ones you're missing when you see the material list in a minute. I'm going to tell you where every single material is ever. All 60 of them. And this will help you with anything else you want to synthesize in addition to the Ultima weapon, technically making this video a 100% synthesis guide for this game. Before I get started, in general you want to try to farm materials with the favorite deputy keyblade equipped for its lucky strike ability. Also if you happen to have it, put on the lucky ring accessory, which is something you could get from mailing postcards in Twilight Town, <laughs> something we are going to be talking about later. And if you happen to get an A rank on the Verum Rex minigame and are are lucky enough to have a master medal with a lucky strike on it, put that on as well. Make sure to have the treasure magnet or master treasure magnet abilities installed on Sora so you can pick up drops more easily, and remember to install any lucky strike abilities your party members may have. Also last side note, just remember sometimes you don't even have to go out and look for drops. If you collect enough of certain materials, they will be added to the Moogle shop or you can use Wellspring crystals to synthesize some materials in the workshop as another option. Alright, finally, here is the materials list. I'm gonna go through everything in the game in order, but if you want to jump to a specific material you need, feel free to look at these timestamps to know where to find your material. Or if you don't need any help with materials and have unlocked the Ultima recipe, feel free to skip to step 2 of the guide. Alright, here goes. <gasps> Blazing Shard is dropped by the Bizarre Archer, which can be found in Olympus. Blazing Stone can be dropped by Vermilion Samba, easily found in Olympus on the rails. Blazing Gem can also be dropped by Vermilion Samba, easily found in Olympus on the rails. Blazing Crystal can be found in San Francisco's Battle Gate 12, dropped by the High Soldier Heartless. You can get Frost Shards from the Winterhorn Heartless in Arendelle. The Frost Stone can drop from the wings of the Frost Serpent Heartless in Arendelle. Frost Gem can also drop from the wings of the Frost Serpent Heartless in Arendelle. And Frost Crystals drop from actually defeating the Frost Serpent Heartless, which can be found in Arendelle. Lightning Shards are dropped from Soldiers, which can be found in Olympus. Lightning Stones can be found in the Caribbean, dropped by the Gold Beat Heartless. Lightning Gems are dropped by the Tireblade Heartless in San Francisco. Lightning Crystals can be found in Battlegate 4 in Toy Box as a rare drop from the Tireblade Heartless. 
Lucid shards can be dropped by the air soldiers found in Olympus. Lucid stones can be dropped by the Malachite Bolero in Kingdom of Corona. Lucid gems are a rare drop from the Chief Puff in Kingdom of Corona. Lucid crystals are dropped by anchor raiders in the Caribbean at the Isle of Luck. Pulsing shards are dropped by power wilds in Kingdom of Corona. Pulsing stones are also dropped by power wilds in Kingdom of Corona. Pulsing gems are dropped by satyrs, which you can find in Olympus. Pulsing crystals are a rare drop from the helmed bodies in Arendelle. Writhing shards are dropped by the fluttering heartless, easily found in Kingdom of Corona. Writhing stones are dropped by shadows, which you can find in Olympus. Writhing gems can be dropped by the Fluttering Heartless, which can be found in Kingdom of Corona. Writhing crystals are dropped by the Mechanitars, found in San Francisco. Betwixt shards are dropped by Reapers, which can be found in the Marsh in Kingdom of Corona. Betwixt stones are dropped by Snipers in San Francisco. Betwixt gems are dropped by the Ninja Nobodies, found in Arendelle. Betwixt crystals are a rare drop from the Ninja Nobodies, found in Arendelle. Twilight shards are dropped by Dusks, which can be found in the Marsh in Kingdom of Corona. Twilight stones are a common drop from Gamblers, which can be found in the Caribbean. Twilight gems are also dropped by Gamblers, which can be found in the Caribbean. Twilight crystals this time are a rare drop from the Gamblers, which can be found in the Caribbean. Mithril shards can be found when you destroy asteroids in the Starlight Way galaxy with your gummy ship. Mithril stones can be found when you destroy asteroids in the Misty Stream galaxy with your gummy ship. Mithril gems can be found when you destroy asteroids in the Misty Stream galaxy with your gummy ship. And mithril crystals can be found when you destroy asteroids in the Eclipse galaxy with your gummy ship. Sinister shards are dropped by the Flood Unversed in Monstropolis. Sinister stones can be dropped by the Flower Snake Unversed in Monstropolis. Sinister gems are dropped by the Turtle Toads in Monstropolis. and Sinister Crystals can drop from the Spiked Turtle Toad in Monstropolis. Soothing Shards are dropped by the Toy Troopers in Toy Box. Soothing Stones are dropped by Water Cores, which can be found in Olympus. Soothing Gems are dropped by Spear Lizards, which can be found on Confinement Island in the Caribbean. Soothing Crystals are a rare drop from Spear Lizards, which can be found on Confinement Island in the Caribbean. Wellspring shards drop from a ton of Heartless, you can find an easy spot with the soldiers in Olympus. Wellspring stones can drop from many Heartless. This area in San Francisco is a good spot to get pogo shovels to drop them. Wellspring gems are dropped by many enemies, you can get them from the Mechanitar in San Francisco. You can get a Wellspring crystal as a rare drop from the Helmed Body in Arendelle, and many other large Heartless. Hungry shards are dropped by popcats, which can be found in Toy Box. Hungry stones are also dropped by popcats, found in Toy Box. Hungry gems are dropped by the Tails of the Frost Serpents in Arendelle. Hungry crystals are a rare drop from the Tail of the Frost Serpents in Arendelle. Fluorite can either be bought from the Moogle Shop or found when you destroy asteroids in the Misty Stream Galaxy with your gummy ship. Damascus can be found when you destroy asteroids in the Misty Stream or Eclipse galaxies with your gummy ship. Adamantite can be found when you destroy asteroids in the Eclipse galaxy with your gummy ship. Electrum can be found when you destroy asteroids in the Eclipse galaxy with your gummy ship. Evanescent Crystal can be dropped by either the Berserker or the Sorcerer Nobodies in Battle Gates 3 and 9. The first time you do the Battle Gates, it will be guaranteed. But after that, it'll be dropped by the boss at a rare drop rate. The Illusory Crystal is given as a reward for beating Battle Gate number 8. You can return later for a rare drop rate from the boss. You can get a regular Orichalcum by shooting asteroids in the Eclipse Galaxy with your gummy ship. And you can get the final 60th item in the game, Orichalcum Plus, by... Huh. Right, that brings us to step 2 of the guide. Collect all 7 Orichalcum Plus. Only 7 of them exist in the entire game, and you have to do your fair share of special activities to earn all 7. So let's go ahead and take a look at how to get each one. To get the first Orichalcum Plus, you need to take pictures of 80 Lucky Emblems. Why they didn't make it all 90, I'll never know, but lucky for you, I have just recently released a complete Lucky Emblem guide to show you the location of every single one. I'll have a link to that video in the description so you can get hunting, and after your 80th one, boom, you got it.
For our second Ori Calcum Plus, you'll need to get the high score requirement on all 7 Regal Flan minigames. If you aren't sure what exactly those requirements are or how to do them, you're in luck! Again, I just made a video on the Flantastic 7 with the location for each minigame and a strategy for you to easily get every high score. The link will be in the description of this video below. After you finish all 7, you'll earn a Flaniversary badge and our true prize, the Ori Calcum Plus. Two down already. Nice. Only took two separate 20 minute videos. Well, for the rest, I won't be linking you any outside videos anymore. Everything else you need will be in this guide right here. For our third Ori Calcum Plus, and definitely the easiest one, travel to the Badlands of the Keyblade Graveyard. Um, alright, well, once you're here, turn around and head to the very start of the world and you'll find this pink portal behind the battle portal. Use it to return to the final world. Once you're in here, there's a nice big chest on the left that contains our lovely Ori Calcum Plus. For our fourth Ori Calcum Plus, head to the Caribbean and land at the Huddled Isles. Board your ship and check the map with the touchpad. We're trying to get to Exile Island. If you can't fast travel there, either set sail from the Huddled Isles or ship's end to travel there. It's a real short trip anyway. Once you arrive at the small Exile Island, get off the ship and head right to the center of the island to find this tiny area with a chest. Inside of the chest is the Ori Calcum Plus. For our fifth Ori Calcum Plus, unfortunately we have to deal with Elsa's demon minigame. Nah, it's not actually that hard, just time consuming. Head to Arendelle and land at the North Mountain, Mountain Ridge to access the minigame. It's the Goofy Shield sledding game, but this time there are 10 treasures hidden on the course that look like this. When doing this minigame, after you collect a treasure, you still need to complete the course and hit the finish results screen or the treasure will not save. So when you get a new treasure, make sure you go all the way to the end and don't quit out early. And don't worry, you do not need to get all of them in one try, that would be impossible. This can get pretty annoying, but I'm here to lay out all 10 treasure locations for you so you know where to look. Just get ready to hear a lot of... And we're off. To get treasure number 1, start the race and at the bottom of the first hill take the ramp and then stay on the middle of the three paths. For treasure number 2, go down the hill and take the ramp at the bottom. Then, keep going down to hit our second ramp to jump up high. On this jump, try to land as far to the left as physically possible. Try to keep as much to the left as you can through this area with the trees and you'll find the treasure right in front of this cave. For treasure number 3, head to the bottom of the first hill and take the ramp. After this, head to the bottom of the second hill and take the second ramp. Once in the air, land as far to the left as possible. Follow the path of crystals to the right and you'll be led to this area. If you find health orbs, you're on the right track. Follow them and you'll find the treasure. For treasure number 4, head to the bottom of the first hill and take the ramp. Then, head to the bottom of the second hill and take the second ramp. At this jump, you want to land to the right of the blue rail. Keep to the left to head to the path with the cave. Once inside of the cave, take a right at the split and keep right to briefly exit again. Once outside, look for a path with HP orbs and follow that to get to the treasure. For treasure number 5, go down the first hill and take the ramp. This time, keep to the far right on the second hill. Always follow the path of the crystals most to the right. Go through this cave and use this jump to land on the rail. At the end of the rail, jump to this narrow cliff on the left. The treasure will be on the end of this cliff. For treasure number 6, take the ramp at the bottom of the first hill. Then, get to the ramp at the bottom of the second hill. Land in this middle area to the right of the blue rail, and then keep very far to the right. You'll get to this area with lots of trees. Once here, keep to the left to find the treasure. For treasure number 7, take the ramp at the bottom of the first hill. Then, go straight down to hit the second ramp. On this jump, land to the right of the blue rail. Keep to the far right and then take the middle path of crystals from here. You'll get to this area of trees. Try to stay in the center of it all until you can see where the 6th treasure would be on the left. Once you do, follow the path of crystals to the right and you'll find the next treasure on this hill. For treasure number 8, head to the bottom of the first hill to jump off the first ramp. Then head to the bottom of the second hill to jump off the second ramp. From here, you want to take the path just to the left of the blue rail. 
Then keep to the center from here. Don't go in any caves and you'll find this third ramp. Take it and you want to land in between these two paths on the left, right where all the trees are in order to take this rail. On this rail, you'll receive the treasure. For treasure number 9, head to the bottom of the first hill and jump off the ramp. Then head to the bottom of the second hill and jump off the second ramp. Finally, you want to land on that blue rail. After you're done with that rail, keep to the right on this hill and you'll find another rail to jump onto. Now keep jumping from rail to rail until you pass over this ramp. Once you do, you need to jump off this rail and hang to the right. Double jump if you need to to get to this rail farthest to the right. Once you hit this one, you're all good. Just keep hopping forward from rail to rail to find the ninth treasure. For treasure number 10, head to the bottom of the first hill and take the ramp. Then head to the bottom of the second hill and take the second ramp. On this jump, land on the blue rail. Once you're done with that rail, keep to the right on this cliff and you'll find another blue rail to jump to. Keep hopping from rail to rail in front of you until you pass over this ramp. Once you do, lean far to the right and double jump if you need to in order to get to this rightmost rail. Then, you keep following the path of rails and they'll dump you into these caves. Immediately upon landing, keep to the right and then once you're in, keep to the left to go on this upward slope. On this small elevated area is where you'll find the 10th treasure. Once you've collected all 10 treasures, you'll receive our boy the Orichalcum Plus. For our next Orichalcum Plus, it's all about the gummy ship. So it's time to brush up our piloting skills. In order to prepare for the gummy bosses in the Eclipse Galaxy, we'll need to start from the Misty Stream. These steps I'm about to give you are for the people who don't want to grind and build their own gummy ships and just want to get this done. Select the Caribbean and press triangle on it to embark from there. Once in the galaxy, turn to the left and fly behind this giant rock. You'll find a constellation which you can take a picture of, and this will give us a decent ship. We're gonna use this ship temporarily to unlock a better ship. Make sure to open up the pause menu once you get it, go to information, and then pick gummy missions just to ensure you get the reward. Quick tip, whenever going out with a ship, click the special weapon and have repair kit on so that you can heal every once in a while with the triangle button during a battle. Okay, now that you have the ship, embark from this waypoint, MST-03, to be placed right in front of the area with the boss battle. Now, I must stress, if you find this boss too incredibly hard, you can always grind up your gummy level by doing any of the missions, collecting orange orbs, or even going back to the battle site in front of the toy box world and holding shoot on the boss with this ship for something easily repeatable. But you should be able to beat this boss regardless if you just follow the tips I give you. But the level up option is always there for you if it's just too much. Anyway, starting from the waypoint, turn around and head straight into the storm. Once you go into the cyclone, the boss battle with the Schwarzgeist will start. This is actually a boss from the game Einhander, and the team that made that game made the gummy ship in Kingdom Hearts 3, so this boss is actually a cool homage to that game. Alright, I've got some really simple tips to give you for this boss. Obviously, hold the shoot button at all times to do as much damage as possible. When he does the attack where he shoots the lasers up, just stand in the specific spot between the gap of lasers, preferably near the center so you can keep doing damage while you wait. The lasers land in the same spot every time, so once you got it memorized, it's really easy to avoid. Then after the lasers, he goes through a cycle of shooting projectiles at you. All you have to do for this is spam dodge while you shoot. What I do is I just dodge straight up and down, up and down, over and over again so that my stray shots still hit him from time to time. You don't really have to pay attention to the attacks, just make sure you are moving during the dodge and you should almost never get hit. This fight just cycles between the lasers and the shooting phase. It's really simple, just a bit time consuming. Once you're on his final HP bar, pay attention though because he may do that laser attack twice in a row to make sure you didn't just fall asleep at the controller. So be prepared for that. After you defeat it, you get to the second and final part of the fight. All you have to do for this one is shoot this little guy as he flies across the screen. If he stops and stares at you for a second, be careful because it's going to charge right into you. If it stops and faces its engine at you, it's just going to shoot at you. That's all the attacks it'll cycle through over and over again and it should be fairly easy to beat as long as you watch for the charge attacks. And with that done, that's it! We got ourselves the Golden High Wind, which is our golden ticket to making the rest of this gummy stuff super easy to do. Now that you have the Golden High Wind, in order to actually earn the Orichalcum Plus, we need to defeat the gummy bosses in the Eclipse Galaxy. 
The four fights that we have to do first are all around the outside of this giant structure. Starting from the Keyblade Graveyard, you can get to the first fight, Colossus Pyramid, by just going straight forward from there. As you can see, when you beat one of the fights, a line lights up to the top. We can see that it looks like it's supposed to be four of these lines right now, which shows off four of our battle locations. So basically, we just need to go around in a big circle to hit those four spots. Once we're done with that, for the fifth battle, Scarlet Shark, you'll need to fly down and under the structure to reach it. With our nice Golden Highwind ship, pretty much all of these fights are brain dead easy. Just hold down the shoot button and when the orange targets are locked on, quickly release the shoot button to send out your stronger shots and then return to holding down the shoot button. And if you ever do happen to take significant damage, just hit the triangle button to use your handy repair kit. Alright, so after you've finished all five of these smaller battles, you can now fly to the top of the structure to find our boss, the Omega Machine. But since we have our literally broken Golden Highwind, this fight is still a complete joke. Just a joke with multiple phases now. In the final phase, be sure to avoid the lasers that come out of the center. But honestly, any tips that I give you for this fight barely matter when you have this ship. After you do beat this boss battle, you'll be rewarded with the Oricalcum Plus. For our 7th and final Oricalcum Plus, we're gonna have to play a gacha game. No, no, not that one. Head to the Twilight Town Tram Common. Once you're here, go to the Moogle Shop and buy something. You want to buy one thing that's really cheap, like this onion here. The Moogle won't judge you, I promise. After you buy it, close the shop and wait. If something pops up giving you a prize postcard, great! If not, go back in and buy another onion and close it again until you get this pop-up. Once you have a postcard, it's up to you to decide how much you hate loading screens. If you don't mind them that much, go to the save point and save your game to keep this postcard and only this one. If you do hate loading screens, just head to the red mailbox to the left of the Moogle and mail the postcard. Every time you mail the postcard, you receive a random prize back. So this could be super fast, or it could end up taking a while depending on how lucky you are. If you mail one and don't get an Oricalcum Plus back, and you happen to enjoy looking at Instagram posts on loading screens, go to the save point and don't save your game but go to the title screen. Then, load the file you saved from earlier, sit through that beautiful screen, and you'll have your postcard again and save yourself a tiny bit of money. Now you can mail your postcard again for free. If you hate loading screens, you don't mind spending money and you're out of postcards, just go to the Moogle and repeat the same thing, buying an onion to see if you can get a postcard. I definitely prefer just rebuying things over and over again as opposed to loading my game over and over again, but what you do is ultimately up to you. This whole ordeal is a mild annoyance, but didn't take me very long. I got my Oricalcum Plus in the mail after about 5 minutes of trying. Easy. Alright, so you got your 7 Oricalcum Pluses. All you would need now are a couple of Wellspring, Lucid, and Pulsing Crystals, which if you don't have already, you can check how to get them at the beginning of this guide. And you're ready for the most exciting step, Step 3. Synthesizing the Ultima Weapon. If you unlock the recipe, have all 7 Oricalcum Plus and the few extra materials, head to the Moogle Shop and in the Workshop we will finally be able to synthesize our beautiful Ultima Weapon. And that about wraps it up for this guide guys. This was an immense amount of work. I really tried my best to surpass my previous work ethic with the detail in these guides. So if you can, like, share, comment, favorite, subscribe, whatever you can do, it means the world to me. I've been Seralem1 and I'm gonna go enjoy using Ultima form. I'll catch you guys later.